Okay, in this video, we're taking a look at ARC section 120, and that's for the compilation of pro forma financial information. And up until this point, we've, we've done videos um, as they relate to compilation engagements uh, in ARC section 60 and ARC section 80, and that's on uh, compilations of historical information. Uh, but this particular section is specific to pro forma information um, or performing compilation engagements on pro forma financial information. And it's pretty short um, and pretty similar to um, ARC section 80. And in fact, it, it pulls or it references a lot of requirements that are included in ARC section 80 and ARC section 60. So what we're going to do with this video is sort of briefly go through this um, section rather than go section by section, um, as we've done in prior videos that uh, are of more robust ARC sections. So we see here that uh, this particular ARC section 120 is effective for compilations with years ending after May 1, 2017. And this section applies to um, engagements where we perform a compilation engagement on pro forma financial information. And so what exactly is pro forma information? Uh, that is a presentation that shows what the significant effects on historical financial information might have been had a consummated or proposed transaction or event occurred at an earlier date. And so there are many different times that this might be useful to financial statement use. For example, it might be used to show the effects of a transaction such as business combination, change in capitalization, disposition of a significant portion of the business, change in the form of the business, or a proposed sale of securities and application of the proceeds. And so this pro forma information needs to be uh, distinguished from the historical financial information and uh, and the following items should be adequately disclosed, for instance, a description of the transaction, the date which the transaction um, is assumed to have occurred, and the assumptions that were used to develop the pro forma um, figures. And uh, I note that the pro forma information should be read in conjunction with the historical financial information. So now we kind of understand uh, what pro forma information is and what we, we might use it for, we can start going through the requirements. Our objective in performing a compilation of over pro forma financial information um, is to apply accounting and financial reporting expertise to assist management in the presentation of pro forma financial information and report in accordance with this section without undertaking to obtain or provide any assurance on the pro forma financial information. So we can uh, we can perform a pro forma financial information compilation in conjunction with an audit or a review or another compilation and uh, which might be helpful to users of the financial statements. So we're of course not performing an audit over it, but we might include audited financial statements and then have a, a schedule of pro forma information uh, at the back or something like that with the uh, accountant's compilation report. So let's go through the requirements here. It says that we're supposed to comply with uh, a ARC section 60 for the general principles. And we've gone through um, the videos for those um, in this video series. So this ARC section 20, 120 that we're going through right now is specific to compilations of pro forma financial information. But the section 60 general principles is for all engagements under SARS and that includes uh, reviews, compilations, and financial statement preparation engagements. So we have to comply with these as well as the ARC section 120 that we're going through now. And as we'll see a little later, some of the sections of ARC section 80 as well. And uh, just like in ARC section 80, we are required to determine whether we are independent of the entity. We don't necessarily have to be independent. We just have to determine if that's the case. And uh, and if we're not independent, then we need to disclose it in our accounts compilation report. Also, as in ARC section 80, we have a section here related to the acceptance and continuous client relationships. And so in addition to ARC section 60.25's requirements, uh, we also need to um, comply with all of these requirements related to the acceptance and continuance of client relationships. So first, we need to obtain an agreement from management that it acknowledges and understands its responsibility for the following items. And this is typically um, done through an engagement letter, um, but we, we need to get management's acknowledgement that they are responsible for the pres preparation of a presentation of the pro forma financial information. Also, any um, document that contains the pro forma financial information, they have to agree to include with it the completed financial statements of the entity for the most recent year or if an interim period, uh, the most recent comparative uh, period, and also any other constituent parts of the combined entity. Management also has to acknowledge um, that they will ensure that the financial statements of the entity um, on which the pro forma financial information was um, built um, have been subjected to a compilation review or an audit engagement. They also need to acknowledge that they will include the accountant's compilation or review report or the auditor's report on the financial statements and any document that contains the pro forma financial information. They also need to acknowledge that they will present a summary of significant assumptions with the pro forma financial information. They also need to acknowledge that they will include our compilation report or that they will ask our permission before they include the accountant's compilation report with any document that contains the pro forma financial information. And if there's anything about uh, the ARC section 60.25 or all of the preconditions for the engagement that we just discussed right here, if there's anything that uh, we couldn't get satisfied about or that management wouldn't acknowledge their responsibility for that item, then we need to discuss it with management and we can't resolve um, or satisfy it 
to our liking, then we should not accept that compilation engagement. So next we have the um, agreement on engagement terms, and this is where we pre prepare the engagement letter. And this should be a written, not a written agreement, can't be a, an oral agreement. And so, so it should, engagement letter should include these items. Um, that's the objective of the engagement, the responsibility of some management that we just went through um, at ARC section 60.25 and dot zero seven. That's uh, management acknowledges its responsibilities. Uh, we should include a paragraph out about the responsibilities of the account, the limitations of the compilation engagement, a uh, description of the applicable financial reporting framework that we will use in the pro forma financial information, and the expected form and content of our compilation report. And then we should sign that compilation report, and management of those charged with governance should also sign it. And so now we're getting into actual compilation procedures, and here we see that we need to gain an understanding of the entity's financial reporting framework, and that should give us an idea of the accounting policies that the entity is using to prepare the pro forma financial information, and uh, we'd be able to determine whether that those policies are in accordance with the financial reporting framework that they're using. And now, for the actual compilation procedures, um, when we are performing the compilation of pro forma financial information, then we should comply with the requirements set forth in paragraphs 13 and 16 of ARC section 80. And uh, we can go take a peek at that section right now, and you can read it in more detail later. But basically, these are the compilation procedures um, that were required of uh, compilation of the historical information. And it says that we should read the financial statement and see whether they appear to be free from obvious material misstatements. And we should request additional information if we come across anything that's incomplete or inaccurate. And that we should also propose revisions uh, to management that they should revise their, their uh, financial statements if financial statements don't adequately refer to or describe the financial reporting framework. That the revisions should be made to get the financial statements into uh, or in accordance with the applicable financial framework or uh, if the financial statements are misleading. And then if, if they refuse to make these revisions, then we should withdraw from the engagement or if there's not appropriate records in place for us to get comfortable over um, the financial statements. So that's uh, pretty much the um, paragraphs 13 through 16 of section 80 that we need to comply with when we're performing uh, a compilation of pro forma information as well. We also need to understand the underlying transaction or event uh, that is uh, necessitating the pro forma financial information. Also, we need to make sure that management has fulfilled um, it's responsibilities that they acknowledge they would in section .07 as follows, and that is to include the complete financial statements for the uh, most recent year or interim period and any constituent parts in a business combination. And we also need to make sure that uh, management has fulfilled its responsibility that it acknowledged in 07C and 07D, that it will make sure that uh, the financial statements that the pro forma financial information is based on has been compiled, reviewed, or audited, and that they have included the compilation or review report or auditor's report um, in any document that contains the pro forma financial information. And now, um, after we've done the, uh, the compilation procedures that we just discussed, we now need to create the accountant's compilation report on pro forma financial information, and they draw from ARC section 80.17 through 31. And so we can uh, go take a look at those sections right now, um, but if in the future you need to, we can uh, you can go back and look at our videos on these sections in ARC section 80. But uh, this starts out with the general rules for creating accountant's compilation reports, and then it tells us what to do if uh, the financial statements were prepared in accordance with a special purpose framework. And then it tells us what to do with the report if we're not independent. And then it tells us what to do with the report if we, if the client has submit, omitted substantially all of the disclosures that are required by the applicable financial reporting framework. And then it tells us how to report known departures from the applicable financial reporting framework. And so if you want to know how to prepare the accountant's compilation report as it relates to the pro forma financial information, you'll need to go um, to our videos on sections ARC section 80.17 through 31 and go through those videos. Now back here in ARC section 120, in addition to those requirements in ARC section 80.17 through 31, we need to include these items in our accountant's compilation report if we're doing it on pro forma financial information. So we should also reference uh, the financial statements from which the historical financial information is derived and a statement as to whether those financial statements were subjected to an audit or review or accomplished engagement. We should also reference any modification of the audit review or compilation report on historical financial information. So if it were a qualified opinion or if uh, there were any additional paragraphs added um, as opposed to the normal audit review or compilation report, we would want to note those in our uh, compilation report on the pro forma financial information as well. And we also need to say a, give a description of the nature and limitations of pro forma financial information. Okay, and so now that we've prepared the compilation report, um, we have to actually document the engagement and what we did. And so this section right here tells us what we need to document. 
that says our documentation at a minimum should include the engagement letter, the results of our procedures performed in accordance with paragraph 12, and that was the compilation of procedures where we were required to uh, read the financial statements, etc. Um, we were also include in our documentation a copy of the pro forma financial information and also a copy of our accountant's compilation report. And so that concludes all the requirements of ARC section 120 as it relates to the compilation of pro forma financial information. Uh, I know we went through this quick, but you can go to this section to get more detail on it if you need it. Um, here's the application and other explanatory materials section, and these uh, reference the requirements above and give some more um, color on how to comply with the requirements um, in hopes that that covers our responsibility to achieve the objectives in this section. Also at the end, as we'll see, we'll have some exhibits. This is an illustrative engagement letter on uh, to agree on the terms of the engagement with management. And also we have an accountant's compilation report example um, for provide, performing a compilation on pro forma financial information. So you can use this template to comply with the requirements of the accountant's compilation report. 